And today I wanna to talk about vitamin D and if you're taking a supplement and it's not coming up, what you can do about it. This is a question that comes up often from patients or family members. And so I figured you may have a similar question or someone you know, so I'm gonna answer it in here. There are five things that I want you to pay attention when you are taking vitamin D supplements or if you have a deficiency. Number one, one of the reasons it's not coming up it can be because you're not taking enough. You're not taking the right dose. So a little bit of background, vitamin D deficiency is if your level is less than 20 and vitamin D insufficiency is when your level is less than 30. Most doctors will agree that you need to get your level more than 30 and we'll give you a supplement for that. Sometimes they'll give you a prescription. In the functional medicine world, we want your level to be uh, closer to 50 because there's so much evidence and research on optimal levels of vitamin D. So if your doctor has prescribed you vitamin D, uh, it is likely something that's a pill that you take once a week. So that's a 50,000 IU that you take once a week. Uh, if that's the case, stick with the dosage that your doctor gave you. 50,000 divided by seven, that's about 7,000 IU per day. A lot of times people who ask me why their level is not coming up, when I really investigate and I go back and forth, they're taking 1,000 or 2,000 IU per day, which is not going to be enough to move the needle and help you see any results or any changes in your level. So keep that in mind. If you don't have a prescription, there are available over-the-counter high-quality vitamin D supplements. And if you want information, let me know. I'll let you, I'll share my supplement store online. You can get vitamin D in 10,000 IU. You can take that five days a week. So that adds up to 50 IU per week. Sometimes I give my patients 5,000 IU if they are 30, but they're not 50 yet. So the amount is gonna uh, depend on where you're at right now, but you definitely wanna be more than 5,000 IU per day if you're deficient or insufficient vitamin D levels. Now, one of the things that I recommend is to get your level tested after treatment. So a lot of times people might be at seven or eight, and then your doctor gives you a 12 week prescription they don't test again. Unfortunately, you don't know if that's enough to get you more than 30 or to get you closer to the 50 if that's your goal. So ask your doctor to get a retest after you finish the 12 week. You may actually need to continue. A lot of times, unfortunately, people take the 50,000 IU weekly and then they completely stop. That's not going to be enough. You may need 5,000, 4,000. You may need a maintenance dose. In general, a maintenance dose is the one to 2,000 going to depend on your medical condition. If you have Crohn's colitis, you're gonna need more. If you're on steroid medications, immune compromised. If you have bone issues, or maybe if you're elderly, you don't get enough sun, or you, uh, for a variety of reasons, your doctor might recommend a different maintenance dose. So number one, you need more than 5,000 IU and likely 7,000 IU per day to get your level out of the insufficiency or the deficiency range. Number two is you're not getting the right form of vitamin D. Vitamin D3 is the one that comes from animal sources and we can get that from salmon or egg yolks, for example. Vitamin D2 is the plant-based and it's cheaper to produce and that's the one that is going to be used in fortified products. Now, traditionally, prescriptions are also made of vitamin D2. If you have a prescription, take a look and see what it is. Is it D2 or D3? There may be a few occasions or reasons your doctor may want a vitamin D2 over a D3 for specific conditions, but in general, we want the D3. Vitamin D2 is only 50 to 60% as potent as vitamin D3. So if you're going to be taking a supplement, going through the effort of, which is not a lot of effort, but it's something you have to buy, you have to remember to take it, we want to be taking the right form. The third thing is you're not taking it at the right time or with the right foods. Vitamin D is fat soluble vitamin, which means that you need to have fats in the intestine when you have vitamin D in order for it to be absorbed. You want to eat it, take the vitamin D with maybe having some eggs or avocado, some nuts, olive oil, or a meal that contains chicken and uh, beef sauteed like a main meal that shouldn't be a problem however if you take vitamin d on an empty stomach very early in the morning or late at night or maybe you just grab it with an apple it's not going to have enough fat 
to help absorb vitamin D3. So you're not going to benefit from the supplement that you're taking. Number four is you may have a problem with digestion or absorption. And this is where I can get nerdy on you and go a little bit deeper in the gut issues. So your liver produces bile salts and we need the bile uh, in order to absorb fats. So we said fat, vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin and we need to eat it with fatty foods in order to be absorbed. Well, bile is going to surround the fats so that they can cross through the lining of the gut and get absorbed. The liver is going to produce bile salts and stores them in the gallbladder. So when the meal arrives in the small intestine, there's a release of bile to help absorb the fat. If you have a problem in the liver where it's not producing enough bile, or maybe it is producing enough bile, but the gallbladder is not releasing it, there's a problem with the bile duct or with the gallbladder releasing all the bile that you need, Maybe you don't even have a gallbladder, and in that case, your liver is dripping bile throughout the day, but when the meal arrives, there isn't enough bile to absorb the fats and the vitamin D. So these situations, you may actually have a fat malabsorption issue, and the vitamin D is going to get carried away with your stool, and you're not going to be absorbed the fat or the vitamin D. And one of the signs of fat malabsorption is you'll have poop that is greasy. Your bowel movements will be greasy, they'll be shiny, they will float on the top in the water in the toilet because fat goes on top of water, if you remember some signs. Uh, so these are the signs that you have fat malabsorption. You may also have like an overall gut inflammation or gut issues that prevent you from absorbing vitamin D and other nutrients. Maybe there's SIBO, maybe there is reduced enzyme production, um, maybe there's inflammation in the gut. So if you cannot absorb vitamin D and you're also anemic, you tend to always be low on iron, you can't get your ferritin levels up, you're always tired, uh, your B12 is low, these are signs that you have a malabsorption issue overall and that could affect your vitamin D. How do you know if you have gut issues? Well, if you are bloated, if you have stomach pain, indigestion, heartburn, constipation, diarrhea. So these are the clear signs that there is a problem in the gut. If you have these, then this is your body telling you, hey, I'm not functioning well, take care of me, do something about it. Now, a lot of people actually don't have severe digestive issues, but they may have chronic pain or chronic fatigue or headaches or migraines or brain fog or skin issues. These can also be signs of uh, digestive and gut issues and you may have those without any stomach problems or you may have those with mild stomach problems. So you may not really connect that it's a gut issue, but if you're not absorbing all the nutrients, you're going to have all these side effects or all these sort of gut brain connection issues. And this is a nudge for you to connect the dots. So number four is a little lengthy, but you may have a problem with the liver, gallbladder, or digestion and absorption. Now, the fifth point I wanna talk about is not directly a reason why you're not absorbing vitamin D, but it's actually something that you need to pay attention to when you're taking vitamin D. Vitamin D, we take it because it helps us absorb calcium. We take it for other health reasons, such as improving the immune system. But let's talk about calcium and vitamin D there. Um, so it's gonna help us absorb calcium. However, we need magnesium in order to activate vitamin D. If we don't have enough magnesium, which is a mineral that is underrated, very, very essential, and there are a lot of deficiencies and people don't know it. If you don't have enough magnesium, the vitamin D is not going to get active and it's going to affect calcium and phosphorus balance. And that may actually draw calcium out of your bones and precipitate them or drop them in soft tissue like the kidneys or the arteries. And that's going to be a problem. So we need adequate magnesium and we also need enough vitamin K2, uh, not K1, it's different, vitamin K2, and that is going to be needed because vitamin D activates certain enzymes that need K2, and then what they do is they take the calcium and they put it on the bones. They help us uh, precipitate calcium on our bones. Without vitamin K2, the calcium floating around is going to go and accumulate in soft tissue again, like the kidneys, or the arteries. Nobody wants kidneys that have calcium in them because that's kidney stones, and nobody wants arteries that are hardened, that's atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries, and it's going to cause cardiovascular problems. So when you're taking vitamin D, make sure that you have some magnesium and vitamin K2. Dosage magnesium is gonna depend from one person to another, 100 milligrams to 300, lots of forms, going to depend on other symptoms that you're dealing with, and vitamin K2, about 200 micrograms is what I recommend when I give vitamin D. 
Let me review. Take at least 5,000 IU, and you probably need 7,000 IU if you are deficient. And if you're on a prescription, take that once a week and ask your doctor to check your level again to make sure that you're absorbing. And you may need to continue after the prescription for a little bit longer on a higher dose in order to get it to optimal range. Make sure you're taking the more available form, which is D3. Take it with fatty foods and uh, make sure you don't have any problems with the liver, gallbladder, or with absorption. And the last point is to take some magnesium and K2 along with your vitamin D. If you thought this video was helpful, share it with other people. I know vitamin D is a hot topic these days and a lot of people have questions. Spread some knowledge and I'll see you next time.